Hey everyone, happy Friday. It's time for another installment in our series, The Bible, One Book, One Verse at a Time. So today we're talking about the book of Esther. Now this is a book that happens after the exile and actually after the return as well. Many of the people of Israel or of Judah uh, have returned from exile in Babylon and have started to rebuild the temple and to rebuild the city there as well. Many stayed though in the city uh, and in the the nation of Babylon, because after all, they had been there, they had settled down, they had started to have a life there. And when the king of Persia decided that he needed to have a new wife because his first wife had snubbed him and his advisors said, well, you can't have that, they had a nationwide beauty pageant, essentially, in order to select the next best, most beautiful person in the entire empire in order to be the next queen. Surprisingly, Esther is chosen, and Haman, who's one of the officials in the king's retinue, decides that he does not like these particular Jews, uh, and mainly because they refuse to bow to him. They have their allegiance to God, to the God of heaven, and won't bow to him. And so he, he wants to eliminate them. He wants them removed because he thinks that their, their allegiance to God causes them to be a disturbance within a kingdom that is supposed to be allegiant to the king and hopefully he would assume to himself. So Haman tricks the king into making an edict that allows people to kill the Jews without any kind of consequence coming back on them. Now, when that edict is published, Mordecai, who's Esther's um, uncle, finds out about this edict, and then uh, him and all of the Jewish people go into mourning. Now, this is a big deal, and when Esther finds out, she starts to wonder what she could possibly do. And this brings us to the verse that I think that encapsulates the message of the book of Esther. This is Esther chapter 4, verse 14. It says, if you remain silent at this time, help and relief for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. And who knows, but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Now, one of the things that's amazing about the book of Esther is that God's name is never mentioned, and yet he seems to be behind the scenes pulling strings all the time. There's so many little coincidences, which of course, for those of us who believe in a sovereign God that is in control of everything, there's no such thing as coincidence. But there's so many of those little things that kind of start to pull everything together so that the people can be rescued by Esther. And Mordecai essentially gives voice to that. He doesn't know what's going on necessarily, but he trusts that help and deliverance will arise, that something will happen, that God will do something. And then he suggests that maybe that's exactly why God allowed Esther to be in the place that she is in. Again, he does it without actually explicitly, without explicitly mentioning God's name. And I think that's so appropriate to our world. We don't know always the way that God is in control, and often he's somewhat hidden from what's happening in our lives, and yet we can trust that God is at work, and maybe that work that God is doing is designed to be through us. So maybe whatever it is that you're going through or people around you are going through that you see, maybe God has put you in a position to see that and to do something about it. Who knows, but maybe God brought you to such a position for such a time as this. And as usual, if this has been useful for you, I'd encourage you to like the video, share it with others, and maybe subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you'll never miss new videos when they come out.